So I'm a very proud uncle. I have uh, plenty of nieces and nephews to keep me busy around Christmas, and uh, they're great fun. And what's wonderful about them, especially when they're, when they're very young, is when they learn something new. Uh, I have one niece named Katie who can do the splits as if it's like the easiest thing in the world. And she like, looks at me, what do, you, what do you mean you can't do the splits? Uh, and uh, she can do these cartwheels and one-handed cartwheels and no-handed cartwheels and, and just, uh, just like, yeah, she's made of rubber or something, I don't know. Uh, but whenever I go visit, she'll, she'll always say, Father Patrick, do you want to see what I can do? Right? And then she'll do a new thing, a new exotic move that shouldn't be humanly possible. Uh, and, you know, and it's great that, that she does these things looking for approval. You're looking for someone to say, well done, that's amazing. Now, she's not being vain. It's just children love affirmation. You know, the, the, it, 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 it's a good thing. Uh, they, they, they put in effort. They put in the practice. They put in the hard work. And then they want someone to say, you know, well done. That's, that's amazing. Like, fair play to you. I could never do that, uh, which is true. Uh, so, and I think we grow up with that. I think all of us probably did that as children. You know, when we'd, we'd achieve something, we'd want mom or dad to say, Daddy, what do you think? Was I, was I good? Did I do well? Or when we hear one of our parents or maybe older siblings say, say it like those, it's not, it's not the easiest words in the world to say, but just when they just say, well done, good man, proud of you. They're, they're simple words, but I think especially as children, they mean so much to us. As we grow up, though, I think we can begin to project some of this onto God, which isn't always positive. This idea that we have to do something to get his attention, right? That we have to, in some way, kind of win his favor. That he's looking at all these other people and needs and problems, and I'm over here, and I have to get his attention by, by praying loads or by doing something kind of spectacular. And then saying, God, can you hear me? Are you there? We just, but we have to kind of reach out to him first because he's not paying attention. And this is, this, is, uh, this is just a massive temptation. This is just a, a, a real misunderstanding of who God is and how God is. In our gospel today, we have the story of uh, the lost sheep. There's a song that we sing here uh, quite a bit in the chapel. It's called uh, Reckless Love. It is somewhat colloquial in its expression, but it speaks about the, the reckless love of God, right? Where he kicks down walls and stuff uh, to, get to, to, to get to us. And while it's not exactly biblical in the way it expresses things, I love the sentiment behind it, right? Which is that the Lord is searching for us first. The Lord is reaching out to us first. The Lord is willing to fight for us first. So when we reach out to him in prayer or whatever it may be, we're only responding to the fact that his hand is already extended. To the fact that he's already looking for us. What man among you with a hundred sheep losing one would not leave the 99? So the little sheep may not even realize entirely that it's lost yet. It may be absolutely delighted with itself in this new field, this neighbor's field that it's in, with loads of grass and it's chomping away. It doesn't even realize it's actually lost, right? Uh, and it's just chomping away. And the shepherd, Jesus, leaves the security and <laughs> leaves the, those he knows are okay and heads off in search of the one that's lost. Now, the, one, the sheep may, may eventually realize it's actually lost and look around and go, oh, no idea where I am. Where is, uh, where is my protection? If a wolf comes, where do I get water? Because I don't know the lie of the land here anymore. Where do, where do I go if there's a storm? So, yeah, it might, maybe initially it might love this newfound freedom, but eventually nighttime will fall and it will discover it's lost. So the shepherd leaves the 99 and looks for the sheep. So the sheep may be well looking for the, for, the, for the flock as well, but just has no idea where to go. But the shepherd is already looking. And this, this, this idea is so, so important for us. That, I mean, it's out of the words of, of, of Jesus' mouth, that Jesus comes looking for us. Jesus comes looking for us. In the catechism, on the section on, on prayer, the, the final part of the catechism, uh, if you want to read it later, it's uh, 25 67, it says, God calls man first. Man may forget his creator or hide far from his face. He may run after idols or accuse the deity of having abandoned, that's accusing God, accuse the deity, God, 
of having abandoned him. Yet the living and true God tirelessly calls each person to that mysterious encounter known as prayer. In prayer, the faithful God's initiative of love always comes first. Our own first step is always a response. So when we pray, that's not us getting God's attention. That's us answering the fact that God has already called out to us. It's us saying, here I am in response to his, where are you? He reached out first though. As God gradually reveals himself and reveals man to himself, prayer appears as a reciprocal call, a covenant drama. So the Lord has already reached out to us first. So in our prayer, we're not getting God's attention. We're not trying to win his favor. We're not trying to win his love. We're not trying to prove how good we are. But we're responding to his love with ours, or at least that's what should be happening when we pray, that we respond to God's love with our love. That we choose to be with him. We choose to give him time. A thought which has been coming up uh, regularly enough now for us in our, in our studies here uh, is this, this idea that if God gives us a certain amount of time or a certain amount of money or a certain certain abilities. If he can trust us with the small amount that he gives us, can't he trust us with so much more? If in heaven we share in God's own divinity, so we share in God's divine power, we share in God's nature, okay? If I can be trusted with what he gives me here, the, small, the amount that he gives me here, then I can be trusted with a hundred times that in heaven. When you think like if, if, if I earn... I've got 24 hours in a day. Uh, so we'll say eight of those are spent sleeping, so you're left with 16 hours in the day. One and a half of those are spent in traffic, you're on 14 and a half hours. Uh, okay, you've got 14 and a half hours of disposable time. And what do we do with it? Is 90% of that all career orientated, all money orientated? Is, is it all me oriented? So I mean, I, I've got my career all day and work, 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 and the kids are home, yeah, but I have to get to the gym because I have to keep looking, I have to look good and you know, get the hair done and the ears tucked and the eyebrows plucked and whatever else is supposed to be done these days. Um, so all of that, so all, all of my time, the, the, the 24 hours that I've been given, I've used for me. So then if God gives me eternity, what am I going to do with it? If, if through working that, I you know, have whatever, 40 grand a year, 40,000 a year, and like all of that goes on me and my hobbies, could God trust me with more? Well, not really, no. Uh, you, often, you often see like, um, as regards lottery winners, those who think that it's a good idea to play the lottery on a regular basis tend not to be that good with money. So if and when they win the lottery, they blow it within a very short, no matter, how, no matter how big the quantity is, no matter if it's, you know, one million, two million, ten million, they buy a massive car, a massive extension in the house, pools, cars, big parties, and voila, after two years, bankrupt. Uh, so if we can't be trusted with a little, we can't be trusted with a lot. So if God gives us time, resources, intelligence, ability, and we actually do use them for good, for others, for the building up of our families, the building up of other people, then yes, we can be trusted with more. And all of this, all of this is a response to God's love for us. So we ask the good Lord today, in this month of November, in which we're praying particularly for all of our faithful departed, all of those who have no one to pray for them. We pray, Lord, that those who are now learning who you are and are learning how to respond to your love with theirs in purgatory. We pray, Lord, that their time in purgatory may be shortened, that they may be welcomed into your kingdom of everlasting happiness. Amen. <laughs>